gathering of Free Presbyterian Church, we present Let the Bible Speak. It's good to have you with us today as we spend 15 minutes around the Word of God, preaching Christ in all His fullness. And this is Leslie Curran saying hello and welcome to the program. I'm delighted you're tuning in once again as the Reverend John Greer, minister of Ballymena Free Presbyterian Church, is back with us to let the Bible speak. Once again, it is our joy and privilege to have you tuning in for this another gospel program. We thank you for taking the time to listen to today's broadcast and we pray that it will be of help to your soul. In Hebrews 11 verse 13, The opening words are these. These all died in faith. We have here a very sweeping uh, statement. These all died in faith. It's a reference to the people of God of a very ancient time, beginning with Abel, running right through to people like Abraham and Sarah. And the Lord says of these individuals that they died in faith. The sense of the words makes it clear that this is not true of all men. It says, these all died in faith. It's very exclusive, really, because it's signifying that those in view in this chapter are the ones who die in faith, which means that the rest of mankind in those ages did not die in faith. How striking, therefore, is this verse. Not all men have this obituary penned over them, because not all men die in faith. It is the glorious obituary of God's people that we have presented here. They died in faith. The meaning of this obituary is given to us when we notice that set before us uh, are these words that follow on from this opening statement. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them is in relation to these promises that these Old Testament believers died in faith. Now, what are these promises? Well, notice their perception of them. It says, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Now, first of all, the promises in view refer to the gospel. They have to do with Christ, the salvation that is found in him. These believers of that time were given a revelation by God concerning Jesus Christ. And God showed Abel, Enoch, Noah, and these other people that there was a Redeemer coming. The first time that such a promise was set forth was right in the hearing of Adam and Eve in the garden after they had fallen, because God made known that there would be one called the seed of the woman who would bruise the serpent's head and would overcome the enemy. And that great gospel promise in embryonic form in that verse, Genesis 3.15, was developed more and more and enlarged upon by the Lord throughout time so that his people were able to see in varying degrees the tremendous truth that was being set forth in those marvelous words. And therefore there was this promise, and this promise was given to the Lord's people generation by generation. Now, the Old Testament saints did not actually live to see the day in history when the Lord appeared, but the text tells us that they perceived that this would happen. It says here concerning these promises of Christ, it says, having seen them afar off, and there is a nautical term that uh, describes the action of a sailor, who gazes toward the shore, looking for land, then descrying the land and setting the vessel in that direction. And these Old Testament saints looked away down the cord of time, and they understood, they perceived, that the only hope for sinful men was in this promised Redeemer. And they set their sights on that hope that there is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, it is said of them that they died in faith or according to faith. May I point out to you today that you will only die in faith when you perceive that Christ alone is the revealed answer for sin. And then there is a persuasion concerning these promises. It says that they were persuaded of them 
and the word persuaded refers to an assured confidence in the mind, convinced of the truth as far as these promises are concerned. The word is used quite often in the book of Acts in relation to Paul's ministry of persuading sinners concerning the gospel. It's a word that shows that men need to be brought to the point where it is clearly seen that this is the truth, this is what saves, this is what will deliver from the wrath to come, and they cast themselves upon the Saviour and upon all that he is and all that he does for those who seek him and for those who save the the, the, the sinner who comes to God in his terms. Notice here that the gospel is therefore set before you for your trust and for your faith. Put us again in the word promises. It is God's promises that are in view, promises that are utterly reliable and trustworthy. You should accept them at once. You should never question them or hesitate or refuse to act upon these promises because that is to question the veracity of Almighty God. It is to it is for you to fail to obey what the Lord is showing you, and therefore you must embrace those promises. For that is also found right here. It says that they embraced them, which means that they actually saluted them, they greeted them as something that was to be uh, embraced and accepted without hesitation. And therefore, I urge you this day to think carefully about these great promises that are set before you and that you are to embrace with all your heart and with all your soul. And as we look at these words, these all died in faith, we not only see that there was this focusing upon the promises of God concerning Christ, but there was then a turning away from their sin. It says that they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. These people who died in faith had most certainly lived in faith beforehand. What a message this obituary conveys to our hearts, a message that tells us much about these men and women of that era who had such a solemn view of the soul, of the things of God, of dying and the world to come and where they would be in God's eternity. And therefore we have recorded here essentially their conversion. They saw these promises, they embraced them, and then they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth, which means that their lives were changed. Their whole view of this world and their whole attitude toward the world was changed entirely. They realized that the world was not going to last forever. They realized that judgment was coming and they therefore began to live by faith in the Redeemer and prove his saving grace every day. We take, for example, Enoch, mentioned in verse 5. Enoch walked with God, and also Noah. Noah walked with God. Here are men who in those times, those times so long ago, knew God, knew Christ, believed in the Saviour, and the transforming power of the gospel was felt in their hearts and in their souls, and they proved the grace of God every day and every uh, moment of their lives. And they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Those two words are not identical. The first word describes their condition in the world, strangers. In other words, they were not belonging to this world. They saw themselves as belonging to another world altogether, that is, the world to come. They saw that there was a future, that there was a great inheritance, and they embraced the fact of that, and they believed in the truth of that, and they saw themselves as not belonging to a worldly society, a worldly mentality, but rather they walked with the Lord, and they were pilgrims in this world, therefore they were journeying toward heaven, and they saw that there was that glorious future for them. What a challenge the faith of these people is to us today. We live in a day when we have God's Word as a whole. We have the Bible in our hands, and we have therefore a full revelation. How privileged we are, and yet what an indictment these people are when we think about how they lived, how they believed, how they walked with God, how they conducted their lives, how they had that true reverential fear of the Lord day by day. I want you to consider that carefully. Here are men who died in faith. 
And that means that they did not leave this matter too late, as so many do today. The patriarchs in these verses lived long lives. They lived at a time when men's lives were marked by longevity of an amazing kind, living for hundreds of years. But they did not say to themselves, well, this is how long we expect to live, so we'll wait until many centuries roll away, and then we'll seek the Lord in faith. No, they sought him early. They walked with him for hundreds of years, and they served him down through those long periods of time. What a challenge to you when human life, in comparison today, is so brief. And so much of your life has already passed away. How little is left. Sinner, hasten to Christ even now and begin to walk with him for whatever time is left to you in this old sinful world. This is what God would urge you to do today through his own word, through this obituary that we read here in Hebrews eleven thirteen. These all died in faith. What a message it is to those who are yet in their sin and who are still unconverted. You spent so much time, wasted so many years. Here you are hastening on toward the end of life's journey with nothing uh, to depend upon, no hope for the future. But yet if you will turn to Christ and trust him, even this day, he will save you, he will deliver you, he will make you his child. May you take that step and may God bless his word to your heart for his glory. You've been listening to Let the Bible Speak. If we can be of any further spiritual help, we invite you to contact us via our website at www.balaminafpc.org on our Facebook at facebook.com forward slash FPC or via our phone number 2565-2895. You may hear Mr. Greer preach each Lord's Day here in Balamina Free Presbyterian Church at 11.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. We assure you of a warm welcome at all of the services and look forward to having you with us. Thank you for listening today. May the Lord richly bless you. And don't forget to tune in next week at the same time as once again we turn to the Scriptures and let the Bible speak.